Welcome to today's program. The flight recorder of the Malaysian airplane that crashed over eastern Ukraine was given over by the Donbas People's Militia into the hands of international experts already three weeks ago. Although this recorder is one of the most important pieces of evidence, and it is undamaged and was obviously not manipulated afterwards, the public did not receive any findings of investigation so far. This is not only strange, but meanwhile extremely conspicuous, because day after day it becomes clearer that the true reason for the crash of MH17 should not be clarified, but intentionally covered up. Also, the ten critical questions of the Russian government about the inconsistencies in the plane crash, you can find these on our CLA TV broadcast from the 25th of July, have not been answered at all by the West, namely by the U.S. government. The fact that we do not hear anything about it leads to the assumption that the flight recorder proves exactly the most likely scenario by now a takedown by a Ukrainian fighter jet. Possibly there are frightened emergency distress calls of the cockpit crew, maybe there are panic cries in the face of death. When experts and the highest government circles are silent about this, then it is time to bring light from a different side. Who are truly responsible for the crash of MH17 and the death of 300 civilians? Here's some background information the public's mass media has widely kept a secret. An OSCE investigation team already declared and recorded that parts of the fuselage of MH17 was littered with holes which could have only originated from bullets of a larger machine gun. The Ukrainian fighter jet Su-25 has such an onboard rapid-fire gun. Those typical damages have also been discovered and reported by Malaysian flight security experts. The bullets hitting the cockpit, exactly noticeable at the wreckage, are most likely to be heard on the flight recorder. The OSCE investigation team, on the other hand, did not find proof that the jet was shot down by a surface-to-air missile as it was claimed by the official White House press release. But what could be the reason for a Ukrainian fighter pilot to follow the insane order to take down a foreign country's passenger airplane? According to the Russian TV station RT, with reference to the Russian press agency Interfax, the attack on MH17 actually was meant for the presidential aircraft of Vladimir Putin. On July 17th, the Russian president was on his flight back from the BRICS meeting in Brazil and supposedly crossed the route of MH17 at about 5 p.m., about 20 minutes before the crash of the Malaysian airline, at the height of 33,000 feet near Warsaw. Since Putin's presidential aircraft had a similar form and colors to the Malaysian machine, in the colors white, blue and red, it could be that the attacking fighter jet pilots of the Ukrainian army may have assumed that according to the commands they had received, they were attacking President Putin's machine, while in reality it was the Malaysian airline MH17. Why is it, though, that this specifically and repeatedly happens to the small airlines Malaysian Air, who have only a few large aircraft? A Malaysian court sentence from the year 2012 gives us a hint about why this might be. The court found Tony Blair, the former British Prime Minister, and George Bush, former U.S. President, guilty of war crimes because of their falsified proofs for attacking Iraq in 2003. The War Crimes Tribunal of Kuala Lumpur, which was called into existence by the former Prime Minister of Malaysia, also condemned Bush in 2013 and seven more of his cabinet ministers for the war crimes they had committed against humanity after the convicting testimonies of high-ranking UN officials and former Guantanamo prisoners. Malaysia, by the way, 
was behaving badly in the eyes of the power elite of the Western power bloc, in the USA's eyes, already several times. Also with the establishment, in 2010, of its own currency, based on gold and independent of the dollar. It had already rebelled against the basic rules of Western financial elite. Of course, this background information is not proof, but certainly gives important hints that the crash of both the MH17 and the ominous disappearance of MH370 in March 2014 could very likely not be coincidences. More likely, these were planned measures aimed to intimidate. If within just a few months, one and the same airline, the Malaysian government airlines, are affected, then it is absolutely necessary to research the background information. Specifically, the cockpit flight recordings should have been investigated by an international independent team of experts. But since this has not been done, the crash of the MH17, a Boeing 777, on the 17th of July, at 5.17 remains a tragic catastrophe which is continuously being blamed by the mass media on the so-called pro-Russian separatists and finally on Putin in order to make them out to be the actual danger. Please help us to reveal who the real warmongers and terror commandos really are by spreading this information. Thank you for your attention and join us again next time.